my name is Holster and welcome to a review for you that is right I just watched Coco that's right um, but take note here I will be kind of comparing it to the book of life which I thought you know uh, was part of but obviously I was wrong and I remember watching the trailer for Coco and I was like I've watched this haven't I and um, you know my memories flash to uh, book of life and I was like I swear I have watched this movie before and I tried to search it, uh, couldn't find it obviously and then when uh, you know when I hit something like uh, Mexican like uh, Day of Dead I uh, hit up uh, Book of Life and I was like yes this is the one that I watched so uh, there you go uh, obviously they are not exactly the same but based on theme they are similar in that aspect because both are um the day of the dead uh de las de la muertos or something like that uh for us uh the chinese culture it's uh, either well you wanna you wanna be really technical uh ours is the hungry ghost festival where we you know we offer um you know food and offerings and you know we burn paper uh, to offer the dead uh, and they come back to the world of the living as well uh, so yeah that is our uh, culture and uh, it's similar in that aspect uh, but what is different between uh, Coco and uh, the book of life is that uh, in the book of life it's more on the book itself and you know it's not really about the de las de muertos it's instead about like good and evil clashing together and and that aspect it was kind of interesting to si <coughs> kind of see the uh you know the afterlife but disney just did it so much better i mean you can definitely see that so many people worked on this and uh, they actually in Arkachi they actually released uh, the, like this semi documentary I don't know if everyone got it but uh, they're just like yeah a lot of people worked on it and you know they did a bit of the storyboards but one thing I didn't really like is that they kind of played their hand but then again uh, too early I mean uh, but then again you know it is kind of in, um, in the poster so I mean I, I already kind of saw the afterlife but the way they did it you know you know the other parts it was so interesting for me I'm like oh, okay so it's just the real world but flipped so it's in the in the uh, in the world of the dead as well so that's interesting and they also brought in um, other aspects that you know were kind of interesting to to that world itself like you know the land of the forgotten you know the the people who don't really get remembered don't really have uh kin to kind of remember them so you know that that was pretty sad um but yeah uh the only thing i have to say is like the first two acts is kind of you know run of the mill um i would i would say that i i am confident in that because you know it's the the kid who has dreams and you know is stopped by his family because you know um family is everything and um obviously you know there is some traditions it's very asian centric it's very you know uh, these type of third world countries i think a lot of us have experienced it i think if you go ask like um you know the black culture the chinese culture sure the indian culture they'll say yep we we know this these type of family because we grew up in those families uh maybe you know for for other uh cultures i don't know if you can um if you can you know relate too much but i definitely related too much because you know it's it is really towards the, the taoist culture as well and uh you know buddhist culture some of the buddhist culture because we all believe in the afterlife as well and we believe in the wheel of life which is you you are you're born you live and then you die and rebirth and you know you repeat the process until you become so pure that you can reach nirvana then that's for us um but uh, obviously uh the 
Mexican culture and this one they kind of explain it in the subtext where they're like okay there is only an afterlife and we have to respect our ancestors and that's more the Taoist um, the, the Taoist um, beliefs um, <clears throat> so I, I, I enjoyed the first two acts you know Dante I don't know what's up with Disney and their portrayal of like semi I mean I, I'll definitely call it slow slower animals because I've seen it in like Finding Dory now I've seen it in um, a few other uh, Pixar stuff but maybe maybe they want to create awareness you know maybe they will say hey don't laugh at these type of people or these type of animals um, you know but I don't know but there is a dog here called Dante and he was a bit you know slow as you know he's biting off his foot and obviously he's a stray as well so we gotta understand that of course you know he turns out to be a, a spirit guide and I was like okay but you know we weren't really sure as well because we we're just like well you know he may be a spirit dog but you know we we, we are never too sure and you know they, they say that in the movie as well is he a spirit dog or is he just a dog and uh, I, I can definitely accept both because I know like uh, dogs can see things that we can't see. So, you know, uh, and, you know, in our culture, we say that uh, if you take the tear of a, of a dog, you will be able to kind of see what the dog sees. And I've never tried it, obviously, but um, I, well, I don't really believe in it. But, you know, if you want to try, I guess you can. <laughs> but yeah, I. Um, I definitely can say I kind of guessed the twist, but not in a really, really big way. It's just like, okay, it's it's there. The clues are there for you to kind of pick up and, you know, bite on it and kind of say, well, you know, it seems too perfect that, you know, Ernesto de la Cruz is his grandfather and then the twist comes. So you're just like, okay, there you go. That was a twist. Um, but yeah, um, you know, the first big clue is that, you know, uh, Hector does sit down with, um, with Hector, no, uh, sorry, Hector sits down with, uh, the protagonist, which is Miguel, and talks about, uh, how Ernesto and him were close friends, and how, you know, uh, he taught him music and everything and let him see all his musical stuff so you know that was the first big uh, big clue for me um but my god man the animation man i i am just so at all at the animation in this especially the water in this one and i know a lot of people were like well you know the dinosaur was the first one with the photorealistic uh water but and Moana also had photorealistic water, and of course, you know, they did it better than the good dinosaur uh, in Moana. But I'm saying that Coco perfected it. I'm just like, oh my god, that's real water. Like, that is, like, legit. Like, and the water come on, coming off of his uh, shirt and everything. I'm just like, jacket and everything. I'm just like, oh my god. And they did the fading effect so well. I'm just like, that is sex right there. I'm just like I can't I can't stop looking at it because it's so perfect. You can't see the grains that is obviously there. I my brain is like there should be grains, but I can't see it. It's awesome. Okay, and uh, so I'm just really really happy that like this animated movie is being accepted well as well. And it's such a shame that some people don't get into animation. You know, my 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 dad doesn't really get into animation. My elder sister doesn't really get into animation. And that's just such a shame because you know this movie is such a wonder to look at. You know, it's it's an art piece. It should be it should be in a fucking museum. I'm just saying, like ah. Oh. The color schemes. I'm a big fan of color schemes, and that's why I'm saying Injustice. It's soft because 
of the color scheme itself. If you ask me what I hate about DC is their color scheme. Like even Wonder Woman, I was like, okay, there's some good color schemes, but the rest is just, ugh, I can't. Um, you know, Guardians of the Galaxy is kind of mixed, but obviously I preferred the second one because that was more, uh, you know, evened out. And I was like, okay, that that's cool. Um, Avengers, I don't really like the color scheme. I'm just like, mm, okay, it's it's there, but I'm just like, and nah, I but I super hate the DC ones. I'm sorry. Uh, the only one I kind of really like, I thought kind of really worked was the Dark Knight and the Batman Begins, and even Dark Knight Rises. I was like, okay, the color scheme is really well done because it's like bright and then it's going to darkness and then it's coming to bright again. So there you go. Um, what else? And in Coco, you know, what I remember the most about Book of Life is the, you know, I don't remember much. And that's such a shame because if I want to compare it, I can't really compare it a lot. And I think, you know, the biggest one I can really compare it to is maybe the main themes of it. And obviously the first theme is surrounding, um, Dile this Muertos and the Day of the Living Dead. I'm sorry if I butchered that. I'm just gonna call it the Day of the uh, Day of the Dead instead. I thought it was Mardi Gras at first, but I was like, oh, okay, it's uh, the Day of the Dead. Uh, well, it's kind of Mardi Gras. Um, but nah, I'm sorry if I, I'm I'm mixing the two. Um, but yes, uh, there is something to be said about the second theme which then uh, diverges which is uh the the book of life one was more about the individual finding his place in life whilst the coco one is learning that you know family does mean good and even though they kind of get on your nerves at points they still want you to be the best that you can and sometimes that means breaking your heart and obviously that sometimes that means you know breaking your dreams but it's all getting uh to a point where you can you can be a better person i honestly don't believe in that but this film does provide good arguments for it uh and obviously i didn't really like the third act i'm sorry but I just didn't really like the fact that, you know, the the family just immediately embraces music just because uh, Coco got her memory back. And that's a bit of a, that's a bit of a MacGuffin just ex machina for me because the guitar was a MacGuffin at the end of the day. And I was like, yeah, I, uh, fuck. I, I kind of knew it was going to be a MacGuffin and I was like, God, it's gotta be a MacGuffin even more when the third and the third act hit, and you know I kind of forgot that uh, about the guitar as well. So I'm just looking back and kind of just thinking of things to nitpick. But the one thing I wished it did a little bit better was the explanation of the the getting you know used to the music and all that and embracement of the music but i guess it's in there in some text somewhere but it was just kind of lost on me so i don't i don't really really hate it i just you know i just felt like the part where you know he miguel tries to push his grandma to remember hector i thought it could have been you know him just remembering hey there, there's a song like a flashback of hector saying i sung the song to my uh, daughter because they did the, f the flashback with Hector so I thought that they could reintegrate that in the end and then only uh, you know um, the uh, Coco's daughter uh, which is the abuelita of uh, Miguel uh, you know say you know but we still discourage music here uh, and then he goes on to say, I don't, I don't mind because I finally found my place in the family. And then only slowly, you know, in the next few years that they start to maybe 
start to accept it little by little because maybe you know whenever the spirits come they hear a little bell here and there and then some music starts to play and then you know maybe the more and more you know they could have done it so much more creatively but i think they already kind of spent a lot of the money in the beginning because they did uh uh wayang kulit uh what we call in malaysia but uh, what you understand in America and all these other places is shadow puppets. Uh, but they don't really do it in a shadow puppet form. They do it in a cloth shadow puppet form. So I thought that was really cool as well because I was just like, wow, that's so awesome to see like kind of like stop motion with shadow puppets because I'm like, that is fucking awesome. Okay. Um... I think I think this might be in my top five of Pixar movie because uh, you know number one is uh, Inside Out for me. Number two is, is kind of Zootopia. Number three maybe uh, maybe Wally -E for me because I really love the environment. Number four might be Coco, might be Coco, and number five would be Up now. Uh, not to say I didn't really like uh, but yeah, I think, you know, Coco is up there, top four, top five, yeah. Um, number six would be, I guess, the Toy Story trilogies, um, uh, and, you know, maybe the plus one as well. Um, and then, like, Monster Jinx is number six. Uh, not that I hate Monster Jinx, I just feel like the Toy Story one just holds, like, more heart to me because like the first two ones i was like yeah but the third one didn't really hold anything because you know i didn't feel as you know heavy to my toys but my cartoons yes because when i'm when my family cut my cartoon that was the day i was like oh shit i watch cartoons today <laughs> cries you know um yeah and I still think Inside Out is the best one, but Coco may climb the climb the ladder here because it may it may even surpass uh, Zootopia, and I was like, you know, Zootopia was really good, and I thought, you know, it it'd be hard to to top Zootopia, and uh, I just read up on this that uh, Book of Life won best animated movie in uh 2012 2014 somewhere around there and if this doesn't win it this year i will be severely disappointed because this truly really deserves it for the for the soundtrack i really love the soundtrack because that guy really sounds like something like elvis the the first guy ernesto de la cruz and hector kind of is that like songwriter and i I think they were trying to go for a bit of Elvis storyline because I was like, this sounds a bit like Elvis, you know, like, remember me? And I, st I saw the Love Me Tenderly because I was like, mm, that's, that's an Elvis song, Love Me Tender, Love Me Tender, Love Me Sweet. Um, but uh, yeah, I thought this, that this movie was really, really awesome. Uh, I'll bite some flaws I had with it, some of the pacing in the front two acts, I was like, yeah, you could have done this a little bit better, a little bit faster, but obviously they wanted to build the the, the family dynamics up, which I was fine with, I was like, okay, then for the kids as well. Um, so yeah, I give this movie an 8 out of 10. Thank you guys so much for watching. Uh, if you like this, please leave a like. And if you want to see more, please hit the subscribe button. And remember to hit the bell because YouTube loves to unsubscribe be uh, people nowadays. And the bell is a surefire way of you be still unsubscribed to me. And also remember that subscription means that you're a loyal Walterist. Thank you so much for watching and remember to share my videos, share the love and make me at the top of the trending page so that you can see more of me, you can see me at the click of a button. Uh, thank you so much again. I will see you guys in the next video. Bye.